what came to mind when you gave that quote that uh, when I preach, they give me tea. When St. Paul preached, there was riots. Remind me of the, uh, I forget who says it, but uh, you look at what the Vatican has today, you, and you compare that to the accounts in the book of Acts, right? One of the first accounts of St. Peter, who's the first pope, he turns to a man who's crippled, and he says, silver and gold I cannot give you, but walk in the name of Jesus Christ, right? He heals him in the name of Jesus Christ. And the, uh, the account was uh, somebody looking at the splendor of the Vatican and the riches that it has, and uh, they comment, well, Peter can no longer say silver and gold I no longer have. Well, Peter can no longer also say, get up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. I just, I found that so powerful. And um, it's one of those things, you know, you got those things that like keep you up at night. <laughs> yeah. Because we were talking before the show about watching The Chosen. And I'm watching The Chosen. Now we've talked about The Chosen on the show before. And we're in the Easter season. And so Easter is really the book of Acts. Yes. And we're going to live it into Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And you witness all of the miracles and all of these um, really awesome things that the early disciples were able the bold, to do. The boldness. Why do you think we've lost that, Bobby? Like what, if Christ is king and he's given this, this authority to do these things, yeah. why are we seeing them more? I think because it's like, it gets back to the, the point I was making is that it's, it should, it's radical. It's like it's people, they, they, when they become Christian or they were born Christian, like me, I'm different. I'm a, I'm a convert, so I chose it. So converts are a lot, usually more passionate because it's like something they chose and they're, they're usually on fire for it, at least for when they first convert. But so much is just taking things for granted. It's just like your spouse. It's like, you know, you've been married, I've been married 13 years, but if I don't like court my wife, if I don't date her, if we don't take time to put it into it, it's like we just kind of get up and go through the motions every day. That's what it becomes. It just becomes motions. But like the early church, it was, the, they were being persecuted too. So there was also like a fear, but it was also, uh, you know, there was a proximity to to Jesus, obviously, but there's the the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the same that we get though. So that's no excuse. You know, that's some of the things like, well, they were with Jesus. They knew Jesus. Like, well, no, he said he was going to send a, an advocate that's greater. Yeah. But I think a lot of it is because we want to put Jesus in a box. It's like we pull him out when he, he's helpful, and then we put him out when, it, when it's tough. You know, it's like we want the good stuff about it, but the stuff that's like, hey, you know, give serve the poor, give your money to the poor, the last will be first. Like these hard sayings, we, we don't want to, Put, think about those things, like the things like humbling ourselves and praying for our enemies yeah. and, and the, the things that they're calling to us, you know, to, to, to radically be different. It's like, it's hard. It's like, it means you got to let go of your old self and take on a new, like Paul, uh, Paul said, a new, a new creation, a new, a new Christ. When we say Christ is King, we're not talking about, and it's an analogy, but you have a King over a governor, over a country he has sovereignty over that country. In the U.S., we, uh, we, with good reason, we, we threw that off uh, yeah. during the revolution, and we established for ourselves a, a constitutional republic. But the idea of king was he's got complete sovereignty, and it's Christ is king not just of, of the U.S. or not just— he's king of the universe. And uh, the idea being that he has total power, and he gives that power to us. Okay, great. I, I, I wrestle with God in prayer. Like, if we are meant to do awesome things, where are those awesome things? Like, uh, I know they're happening, right? Mike shared an account on our last podcast of a lady who was healed through the intercession of St. Faustina and of her relic. We do something at our parish in St. John uh, called Alpha, and one of those nights is focused on healing. And we inevitably get at least one, if not more than one, true accounts of healing, like somebody who's had severe back pain or just whatever the issue is, yeah. and they've been healed of it. Wonderful. I, just, I continue to wrestle, though, with, again, the richness of the faith lived in the book of Acts with how it's lived now. And not so much that God isn't acting anymore because he's acting, but it's like, where is our faith as a people yeah. that we aren't able to, to 
bring God to life in such a bold and um, awe-inspiring way, in a life-transforming way. I mean, to have the confidence of a St. Peter to be able to go up to somebody and say, get up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ, and they get up and walk. Yeah. Or St. Paul when he's preaching and, and a guy falls through a window and falls to his death <laughs> and he yeah. brings him back. Yeah. Right? It's just, it's amazing to be able to see that. And it just, it begs the, begs the question, like, Lord, is this something that you want in this age? Do you want that level of, of, of miraculous? And if so, how can I be a channel of it? Yeah, when I first became Catholic, I started reading the Gospels. I read them over and over again for like two years, and I was reading Acts. I'm like, all right, now I'm getting mad. I'm like, all right. I'm like, <laughs> when are we going to start doing the stuff? That's what I just kept saying. Like, when, when do we do the stuff? Like, yeah. I don't understand. I'm reading all this. I'm reading all this. Like, doesn't doesn't look like the, the church doesn't look anything like this. I'm like, yeah, when they come, yeah. they're praying. There's faith, faithful people, and they're praying. I'm like, okay, I get that part. But what about the stuff? What about, you know, the, so then we found Alpha. And then, you know, it was like praying with other people. I seen miracles too. It's like, but I think a lot of it has to do with the expectation that those things are still possible today. That isn't just something 2000 years ago, but it takes trust and it takes faith. It takes, you know, if you have faith of a mustard seed, you know, or, you know, you can move mountains. Like literally we can still move mountains, you know? And it's just like, a, do we... Do we see that that's possible? You know, God says that everything's possible with him, but it's so much that we we kind of limit God before he even has a chance to work. Well, I'm not good enough, or he wouldn't use somebody like me, or there's would, a million reasons. Would he really do it? Would he really do it? No, why, why, why would he do it? It's like we have this watered-down version of it. It's like, well, is it true or is it not? It's like it isn't, yes, it was written 2,000 years ago, but it's also written for us. And it's encouraging us to 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 do these things. Not necessarily not, not everyone has the charism to heal people, but I think a lot of it has to do with the faith of the person too. I mean, it's it's not just the person who's going to help pray with the other person do things. It's the faith of the person to receive, like the woman who's just reaching out to Jesus's garment. I just want to touch. She had extraordinary faith. Like yeah. no one has much faith as her. It's like she's willing to put herself out there to be vulnerable. Because what if God isn't ready to heal you? You know, I think that's a lot of what people are worried about. Well, what happens if he doesn't use me? What if I look stupid or mm -hmm. like one of those things? It's like, well, I don't care. Like me, I'm not, I'll, I'll be bold. But like, I just, like, what do I have to lose kind of stuff? Like, you know, I've had people pray over my back. I'm like, yeah, this has gotten a little bit better it's here and there. Yeah. But I'm like, it's not because I didn't believe. It's just, you know, sometimes God, it's his plan about how, you know, when and how he's going to to heal people or do things like that. Man, you read the book of Acts and it's like it's every, so, every yeah, person's yeah. like. It's awesome. Yeah. It's inspiring though. That's why I love that we read in the Easter season. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, but it's challenging. It's also like, you know, there's stories of like they gave everything and then just live by trust of God, you know, but there are people like that today. I, I know someone who gave up everything they have and they live by the, by, by faith. You know, so, that's radical. Yeah, let though. me ask you about that because... <clears throat> Peter, tradition hold, he had a mother-in-law. Yeah. But it doesn't say anything about his wife. But if you can't have a mother-in-law without a wife. Yeah. And he was a younger guy. So presumably that she was still around. I don't, I find it like a difficult thing. You know who I'm resonating with the most? And this is related, so it's not, I'm not changing gears. I've related so much with Nicodemus in The Chosen. Yeah, Katie loves him. <laughs> I, I hope they bring him back. Because he's wrestling. He's, like, he's wrestling so much, but in the end, he isn't able to surrender his family and go follow Jesus. Yeah. I don't think he was so much tied to his lifestyle, but it was more to be able to give up his family that, that kept him back. Yeah. But then you have St. Peter, who's able to kind of, not set his family aside, but surrender his family to God in order to follow Jesus. I thought that was such a inspiring, but also thought provoking. Like, could I do that? I mean, I've got a wife and kids. Yeah. I mean, and Jesus tells us, like, if you put your 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 mother, your brother, your spouse before me, you're not worthy of me. That's a difficult teaching to accept. Again, if he's king, you follow the dictates of the king. Yeah, wherever it may be, where yeah. it may lead. It's difficult because God gave me that family. 
and I also have to be a good, you know, husband and a father. But sometimes he does call us with, with our families. You know, it's like there's many stories where people are called and go to, you know, be missionaries somewhere and they just take their whole family and just go. Yeah. But what I, you know, what I've learned in, is that when God's calling you, it's a pretty clear thing. It's not like, I don't know, maybe he's calling me. It's like, if that is, that's probably not God talking to you. Maybe that's just you tired of what you're doing or whatever. You know, it's like, I've been in prayer about like, what does God want me to do? And it's not clear the things that I want to do that that's what he wants me to do. It's like, as much as I wish he would. And, but it's just not that it's just, you know, so I'm still trusting and being obedient and trying to, trying to do what I can do with where I'm at for right now. And when it comes time for him to call me to the next thing, then I'll, I'll be open to it. But it's like, he'll be clear about it. It's not going to be like, maybe, you know, but that's where discernment and prayer and sc studying scripture and going to, you know, confession and having a spiritual director and having people that you could talk to, to talk these things out because not everything has to be extraordinary either. Like, yes, it's temp the temptation is I want to be just like the apostles. I want these crazy miracles. Well, what's a bigger miracle? Bringing someone to faith and the first time they've been to confession in 50 years. Like that's a major thing. Like that's how saints are made. So like one soul getting to heaven is a miracle. So we have to also take a step back and think about that. It's like, yeah, I want to heal somebody. I want the crazy things. I want to build a new church. I want to have a huge ministry. I want to do these. But you know, like Mother Teresa says is that the best way to do it is one person at a time. So what does that look like? Well, it's walking with somebody. It's, you know, admonishing the sinner sometimes. Sometimes it's encouraging them. Sometimes it's praying with them. Sometimes it's taking them to mass or adoration. Sometimes it's forgiving somebody. Sometimes it's these things that seem like they're not as important, but doing that out of love. You know, and that's, but we don't, we don't want that. We want the, the big splashy things. We want like, you know, I want to be a saint someday, like on a statue, you know, at least that's what, I, you know, like me, I'm like, I, I want to have that kind of faith. You want your own prayer card. I just want like that, like that God to use me in a special way. Yeah. It's, it's going to be something that's going to make a big difference, but usually it's going to be, you know, small things with great love you know, which is humbling. You know, he's not going to give you big things to do if you haven't first done the small things. Like if you have, if you're not loving your family well, well, what is he going to do? What is he going to send you on to convert a whole town if you're not like converting, you know, and, and loving the people close to you first? So he's not going to tell you just leave your family because they're difficult, you know, <laughs> to go do something great. It's just, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's being in tune, you know, you're very thoughtful in, in your discernment and you're praying. It's like, sometimes it's, it's just doing ordinary things with extraordinary love. It's like loving your family. Mother Teresa says, you know, no, a lot of people come to her. It's like, no, go home and love your family first. Do that. Do that well. And then once you get that down, then maybe work on your block or your workplace or your parish or or those things. And then maybe start a nonprofit and do those kinds of things. But if you're not doing your, if you're not if you're not staying in a state of grace and your family's in mess and things, you know, start start locally as close as you can to 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 home.